the station that's on your side. News 12, first at 5, continues. City officials continuing to offer new opportunities to people in the Laney Walker area. Coming up, we're going to take a look at new housing and resources going to a spot that really needs it right now. The first excitement is brewing in Augusta with the Masters just a week away and the women's amateur kicking off tomorrow. Yes, a lot going on. Today we're out at Champions Retreat where the women will compete for the first two rounds. Our Mike Yakakonis gives us all the sights and sounds from today's practice round. The practice round here at Champions Retreat has just finished up. Every player who I've talked to so far has expressed how excited they are to be taking part in this year's tournament. And this year, it may actually mean just a little bit more to the majority of the field. The majority of the field here at the Augusta National Women's Amateur is international. In fact, 44 of the 82 players come from a foreign country. Because of COVID, many of the players actually haven't been home or seen their families in months, if not over a year. The Augusta National Women's Amateur is actually allowing some players to see their families for the first time in a very long time. My dad just got here last week to caddy for me, so I'm just so grateful to see my family as well because of this. So, so there's just so much to it, and I can't even like express how grateful I am for this opportunity like on so many different levels. You can't not be happy for those players and families who get to have those reunions. So far, the players and caddies who I've talked to all say that the course is playing pretty soft. And we'll see how it continues to develop over the next two days. At Champions Retreat, Mike Yakachonis, on your side. Thank you, Mike. Such a special opportunity for these young women. Plenty of people were locked down at home, but not many can say they were locked down away from home. But uh, that's just part of the sacrifice they're making to play golf in Augusta the week right. before the Masters. And last year, it was completely canceled. So this is the first time yeah. in a while, in two years, since that first inaugural tournament that they've been able to do this. So sure. that also adds another level and layer of excitement. And the best in the world here in town. So if you're in town for that and you're watching, we've got glad you're here for more reasons than one yes. great golf and it's a sign that th times are actually getting a little bit better i know it's it's a blessing isn't it we are so ready for more storms as we continue with your first alert forecast guys all right thanks Mikhail. first at five the aiken county coroner's office says it's investigating the drowning death of a one-year-old in trenton it actually happened yesterday at carolina bay park on price avenue in aiken officials say they were called there after a mother reportedly fell into a pond with her child now we're told that child, Paisley Hyatt, will be autopsied tomorrow. The coroner's office, the Aiken Department of Public Safety, and SLED agents are all investigating. Also first at five, arguments to overturn the conviction and death row sentence of Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof have been set now. Roof's lawyers will make those arguments starting May the 25th. Back in 2017, Roof became the first person ever sentenced to death for a federal hate crime. Roof was convicted for killing those nine black members of this church, the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Historically, the Lady Walker area has faced a lot of a lack of resources from the city, but now the area is finally looking to be getting some of the attention it deserves. In just the last four years, more than 320 housing units have been built there, and officials, they are not stopping there. They've got plans for a grocery store as well. Our Kennedy Harris is live on Twig Street and James Brown Boulevard to show us some of the progress. Kennedy. Yeah, this is the heart of the revitalization efforts right here. And the plan, it started in 2008, and it's already slowly but surely making a big impact on this community. And after it was first approved by the city, the plan to revitalize Laney Walker with new affordable housing was put into place. The project is led by Augusta's Housing and Community Development Department. The goal was to create housing that would have an overall shift in economic development and allow for more neighborhood advancement. So far, around 50 homes have been built and several apartment units. The first set of homes cost about 160000 but the last home that sold out of that set was around 240000 thousand the development manager says the proof is in the progress it shows the neighborhood value is increasing and that's part of the goal that's a great sign uh, for the community because we provide housing that's needed and uh, with us having the incentive program we provide down payment assistance uh, or gap subsidy to make the homes more affordable 
and the project isn't over yet. They have 180 land parcels just waiting to be developed, and there have five houses that are under construction right now. And it starts with affordable homes, but the end goal is much bigger. Tonight at 6, we'll take a closer look at how the, this plan plans to change this neighborhood. A lot more than a facelift. Thanks for that, Kennedy. Senator John Ott. Also, the MLB Players Association reacting to the new voting bill in Georgia. Officials say they're open to the discussion of moving the All-Star Game away from Truist Park in Atlanta, and it would not be the first time in the sports world. In 2017, the NBA moved its All-Star Game from Charlotte in response to the bathroom bill in North Carolina. In the 90s, Arizona lost the Super Bowl after voting to not have an MLK Day as a paid holiday there. Officials from the Players Association say they've not yet had the discussion this time around. Switching to vaccine expansion now. Tomorrow, South Carolina will allow everyone 16 and older to get the vaccine. So to get you ready, we've got a couple of clinics available starting tomorrow. Aiken Regional hosting a clinic at USC Aiken Student Activity Center. You do not need an appointment, but if you do schedule one, you will be given priority. They will be giving out the Moderna vaccine. That clinic is from 8 to 4. North Augusta Pediatrics. They also have appointments available at their clinic. You will need to call a phone number, 803-510-0017. That number is on your screen. They are giving out the Moderna vaccine as well. According to officials, black vaccination rates in South Carolina are lagging. More than 1 million people have gotten at least one of the shots, but only 18% of those people are black. According to a nationwide survey, more than 60% of African Americans say they were unlikely to get the vaccine. Health officials point to doctor-patient relationships and underserved communities as a potential reason for the low rates. Fundamental doctor-patient relationship is very poor in these underserved communities. Church leaders say the black church is the most trusted organization in the community, so it will be their job to help sow trust in the vaccine, as well as helping to spread access to the vaccine. Today, the U.S. Education Department rejecting Georgia's request to waive state assessment testing requirements, which means students will be taking those Georgia milestone tests this spring. But the Education Department did approve a request for Georgia not to have to submit a summary of those results, so school funding will not be hurt by the results. This comes after yesterday's announcement that South Carolina students will also be required to take end-of-the-year exams. Today we're hearing from Governor McMaster as well. South Carolina is set to receive $48 million in emergency education relief. The governor speaking out about how that money will help increase learning in the Palmetto State. His focus right now is getting more Internet access across the state for South Carolina students. It will expand, but what this will do is allow for computer labs for access for anyone who wants to come, whether it's students, whether it's professors, whether it's people in the communities, everyone in between to have access to high quality, high quality location, high quality equipment and access to the entire world. The governor is also working on a project to allocate $30 million toward broadband expansion in South Carolina. Some good news for businesses looking to use the Paycheck Protection Loan Program. The new deadline for you to file for help is May 31st. So far, more than 5 million businesses have applied, saving about 52 million jobs. Officials say there is still about $130 billion left in that fund. One business owner says even if you're unsure if you qualify, put the application in anyway. It was flooded with questions because people did not understand, for example, if you were a cosmetologist or a beautician or you were a barber, that you also qualify for the program. Officials say there has been a backlog in getting that funding out. The extension will give them until June 30th to actually get the money in the hands of business owners. Columbia County parents, listen up. You can pick up free curbside meals tomorrow. There's going to be a week's worth of meals for your kids. Those services will not be available over the course of spring break, which is right on top of us now. We hear about funny or silly social media challenges all the time, but one local man is starting a challenge that will make all the difference in our community. And we're looking at some isolated only at the Honda Dream Garage Spring event. Enter Paul Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy. If you've been hurt in a car crash, you need help now. 
Don't miss deadlines and don't lose out on the compensation you deserve. Your car, your medical care, the paperwork, none of it can wait. Call, text, or visit us online anytime, 24-7. We work fast to get you the best results. Injured? Call Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy, 706-724-2661. You know, these days we see a lot of viral challenges on social media. A lot of them are silly, but sometimes you run across one that makes a real difference in a community. And as Tradesha Woodard reports, one local man is challenging people in our community to perform five acts of kindness. Darius Robinson says a little can go a long way. Started paying for coffee at Starbucks to everybody who's walking through. He says that's when he noticed one gentleman walking away in tears. And I'm like, are you serious over a cup of coffee? And he was just saying how rough a month that he had. I think he was just at his breaking point. He says sometimes kindness is all it takes to restore hope. That's why he's encouraging everyone in our community to be a part of a movement. You do five random acts of kindness. Two of them with somebody outside of your daily circle. And then you share at least one of them on your own social media feed. He says when you post it to social media, he encourages you to tag five friends to join the challenge. You always feel better when you can do something kind for somebody else. So, and it becomes contagious. Your hand and mine is the catalyst of positive impact in our society and if we do nothing nothing changes robinson says it's all about seeing value in every human filling the gaps of division with love if we did that we wouldn't need a black lives blue lives red lives matter the campaign is to combat the divisiveness that we have in our society right now we're more tribal than ever he says change starts with you leaving everyone with one message accept the challenge tradisha woodard on your side Wow, I'm getting amens from all over the place, but that's a great challenge, the five the five challenges. And to have somebody outside of your circle in there, that's smart, too. One of, one of my favorite things to do is buy a lottery ticket, yeah. and one for yourself and then one for the person behind you in line. They always look at you like, wait, what? Did you just give me a lottery ticket? And no then, strings attached. Right, and I say, yeah, and I hope you win. <laughs> you want to make fun. somebody emotional? Mikhail, buy their, buy their Starbucks. Definitely. Yeah, Tears yeah, that's start true. Going. We talked about food being the way of people's hearts. It I is. Mean, coffee as well, right? It so is. Yep. I think that message of unity is something that we should be promoting in our Absolutely. society. I really do like that story. So I'm, I'm behind. Very heartwarming. Sure. For Somebody sure. tag me. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. Thanks, Mikhail. Now take a look at this. Toddlers got to have some fun today at Finnezy Swamp for an alligator egg hunt. The event was especially for them to help develop their motor and social skills. They got to play with things like lily pads and caterpillar coloring. We ask organizers about what type of impact these kind of events have on our kids. But it's so important to get them outside, get them doing stuff, having fun and learning, um, because, you know, it's, you go a little crazy staying inside all the time. And a lot of us have been inside for a long time, not seeing other people. So it is great to see in-person events happening because it's kind of hard to do a virtual egg hunt. Oh, so they weren't hunting for alligator eggs. I'm glad to hear that. I'm relieved <laughs> to hear the children weren't out there hunting for alligator eggs. Yes, because we know some big ones are out there. <laughs> All over Fantasy Swamp. Okay, if you've ever looked up at the stars, you might wonder, is there ever a chance you're going to get to feel the effects of weightlessness in space? See the Earth's horizon on that curve. Coming up, a new venture that could make that a reality. Being safe and easy. But iCults, we're different because our focus is very community oriented and very team focused. But when meeting with someone who's been injured on the job, you have to realize that often this has changed their life. I tell my staff, my paralegals all the time, we're dealing with people at some of the lowest points of their life and some of the roughest times they go through. So being able to help them with that is one of the greatest joys, I would say, of uh, practicing law. Every day we get a little closer to the day where people like us can travel into orbit. Can you tell how excited Richard Rogers gets talking about this? I'm ready for it. He really wants to go to space. Thanks to some well-known billionaires, not Richard Rogers, but hey, we should hope, right? True. We can see commercial space travel starting next year, and another company is trying to get humans to Mars. Yeah, maybe, no, I'm Richard. Not, I'm not going to sign up for Mars. <laughs> Chris Martinez shows us more. Virgin Galactic believes this brand new spacecraft will give paying customers a chance to be an astronaut. It's tremendously exciting. It's been a long 
a, a long journey to get this far. Sir Richard Branson is the billionaire behind the operation and says the VSS Imagine will have test flights this summer, including one that he will go on. This is the third version of the Virgin spacecraft. Previous flights were carried up aboard a mothership release, release, release. and then dropped back down to Earth. Future missions will head miles above the planet's surface and allow tourists to unbuckle and experience several minutes of weightlessness. The first launch could be next year, with tickets already selling for $250,000. Our plan is to build a number of spaceships um, so we could maybe get up to sort of four or five hundred flights a year, um, and then we will try to get it down to a price where um, as many people as possible are able to go up. Branson isn't the only billionaire reaching for the stars. Amazon's Jeff Bezos tested his latest Blue Origin rocket in January with hopes of one day taking tourists up. So proud to work with such a great team. And Tesla's Elon Musk has SpaceX. One. One of the company's experimental rockets blasted off on a cloudy Tuesday in Texas, exploding during the flight. It's designed to return to Earth, but a test earlier this month also ended in an explosion. Virgin spacecraft lands like an airplane. The company had its own crash in 2014 that killed one of the pilots. There have been many successful tests since then, and the company expects to give people an out-of-this-world experience and bring them back safely. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And bring them back safely is what we're going to cling to with that story right there. Yeah, the first people to volunteer to do this, bless them. Volunteer <laughs> to write the check. Yeah, to go to right, and take, yeah. and take the, but would you want to be the first, though? Not the very first. Yeah, that's a little scary. We saw what happened with some of those yeah. experiments. It's not. It's a. It's a dangerous thing. Yes. Space let's, always let's, has been. Let's let some other people try it first, yeah, and yeah. then we'll go. But what of you? Once you get here, <laughs> we're back for more in a moment. Milton and let the madness begin. Just enough time here to show you this stack of cash on your screen. Yeah, an Oklahoma woman found forty-two thousand dollars in the pocket of a coat she bought at Goodwill. No, she did not keep it. Instead, she told her daughter the right thing to do. we got to track down the owner. So with the help of Goodwill, they found the owner, and as a gift, the owner told her to keep about $1,000 of it. Always check the pockets because you never know what people have oh, hidden God. inside. Look at all that money in the, wow. in the pocket of a coat yeah, that I, you're going to donate. Yeah. That Whoops. <laughs> Take another look. But good for her doing the right thing. Right. Well, not a bad uh, situation right there. At least she got $1,000, so... Uh, the person could have gave her nothing, so not a bad uh, end to that situation. But looking ahead towards the forecast, we are tracking the threat for those stronger to severe storms tomorrow. But as we head towards next week, a beautiful forecast, lots of sunshine, those temperatures back in the 70s. Thanks, Mikhail. That's all our time for now. Laura Warren joins me for News 12 at 6 o'clock. See you then. When we say we're your